Chamatangi. The moon is still a on Chamatangi. My song, a lonely song that always haunts me. My dream, a lonely dream that only taunts me. I know forevermore the ocean's throbbing roar will call me home. I'll soon be coming back to Tematangi. Tematangi. Now you leave Coletta alone. You ought to be ashamed, Salty. Shame! Why is it, Captain? Every time we sight land, these two start fussing. Guess they both want to be the first to let us know. I guess so. Just keep them separated. That's part of your job as first mate. Sure thing, Captain Knight. Come on, Salty. We should be sighting Timotangi any minute now. Wouldn't worry about your daughter, Chief Morea. I'm sure you'll find her well and happy. No, Capitan. The guard had not been good to Mareva. They took her husband, Prince Kahani, one week after marriage ceremony. Yes, I know. And it is many moons since she came back to island home for visit. But your son, Terahi, has been with her for some time. Not even have word from Terahi. No, Capitan. I feel in here. Something is wrong. Hey, Tula, come in. You got any uh, relatives on uh, Tematangi? I think maybe a cousin. I'll bet maybe a cousin. You got at least one cousin on every island in the South Pacific. Oh, no. On the island of Mutui, I have no cousin. What's the matter? Wrong kind of people on Mutui? No people on Mutui, just seagulls. Seagulls. Every time we had visited Tantangi, the natives had come swarming out in their canoes, shouting and singing and climbing all over our ship like the happy people they are. But as we sailed closer to the island, I had a growing feeling that something was wrong. See anybody? Just a small launch. Anyone on launch? From this distance, I can't tell. I had no way of knowing that what was taking place on that launch was the clue to the silence that hung over the island. Looks bad. Give it a turn. Doesn't answer. Give me the line. Let the sharks have him. Hey, Malone, there's a boat coming in. We better get in.
Captain. I don't like it. You to think they're all dead. It's hard to believe that this is the same island. Hey, it's coming from over there. Make your heart glad. No, my father. It is too full of sorrow. This meeting only makes it heavier. I'm here to help you. Has there been sickness? A plague? A plague? Yes. Plague. And your brother Terahi? The princess better give the right answer. You must leave Tematangi at once. Then you come with us. We will all sail back to Ahonui. These are now my people. I stay with them. You must go now. As you wish, Princess. Parahioi. Parahioi. Captain Lee! Captain Lee! Captain Lee! You'll drop that gun. Better drop it, mister. You should have taken the lady's advice and left this here island. Moreva, who are these men? They've made us slaves. That is Malone. Malone? I heard about you in Tahiti. You didn't make yourself very popular there either. What are you after? Pearl. Pearls? I never heard of any pearls on Tematangi. They're here, all right. It's just that they're a bit hard to get at. You see, they're in deep water, real deep. I'm beginning to understand what's happened to all the young men of the island. Not all of them. We kept this one alive for one. I'm going be such a nice bit of leverage on the princess and the others. Now stop asking questions and get moving. Come on, you. No, Why? Holy Ross. Big and strong, ain't you? We'll just see how strong you are. I've heard of you too. Jim Knight, American with a touch of Polynesian blood. Studied to be a medico, didn't you? When you came through here fighting the war, you fell for the place. Lure of the South Seas or Call of the Blood or something. Real romantic. Yes, sir, I like that story. But you know what the best part of it's going to be? I'm listening. The best part of your story will be the ending. Get into the compound. Go on, you. Captain, tell me I'm dreaming, will you? This is no dream. There is no way out. There's no way out if we think there isn't. Tell me about these men, Tarahi. Did they just stumble onto the island or what? No. They hear stories. Whispers of pearls on Tematangi. They bring the finest diver in all the islands. Matufa. What happened to him? He told them. Too deep. They make him dive anyway. The fourth day he died. I see. Since then, they've been forcing the rest of you to... Today, they took Buhana. He no come back. Maybe you had better left Tamatangi, like Mireva said. Then you live many years. Now you die. Before me. Tomorrow. Put the 
is on. Maybe we can get some extra dives out of you. This won't interfere with your diving. If you try to swim away, we'll haul you in like a gaff fish. Just to be sure you don't untwist the wire, we solder the end. You gentlemen are very clever, aren't you? Thought of everything. is for this. And work fast. Well, Captain Knight, watch out for sharks and giant clams. We lost a lot of divers that way. Now get going. this deep. My ears began to ring and I could feel the blood pounding through my temples. As I hit bottom, the ocean floor became alive. Not ten feet away, a giant leopard ray stirred from its sleep. It must have weighed a ton. See if he signals back. Suddenly I got an idea. It was a long shot, but it just might work. Of you. What's your game? There's no picnic down there. Why don't you go down and try for yourself? Hey, Malone, look! Man, that's a beaut. Maybe you're lucky, Captain Knight. Lucky for us, I mean. Now get back to work. And don't lose this one. It worked fine so far. Now came the real test. I bound the two knives together with a cable forming a pair of shears. And then something strange happened. The smaller fish suddenly left the area. And for a very good reason. The giant manta ray had returned. It could cut me to ribbons with its stinger. the cable gave way. Pinky, give him a tug. It's okay, he's still on. Down two 
minutes. So what? He can't get away. Must have him by the foot. Cut him loose. He's had it. Nobody could stay down there that long. People are grateful for what you have done. Once again, they can live in freedom and peace. I make you now a chief of the people of Temetangi. Thank you, Princess Morena. She 
he's my cousin. Cousin. Tarahi, get the prisoners aboard the Tahiti Star and put them in irons. With pleasure, Capitani. All right. Move. Another cousin. Now I can return to Ahunui with a glad heart. I too would like to return to my home island for a visit, if I would not be in the way. In my way? Princess, it would be a pleasure to have you aboard my ship. Thank you. I will get ready. Are you Capitan? For our passage and for the many favors you have done our people. This is far too much. These pearls are of great value. My father wants you to have them. Oh, thank you, Chief Pareya. And these, I want you to place with the white men in Tahiti. Who will sell us food and medicine when we need them. I'll tell you what. I'll put them on deposit at the bank and you can draw on the money anytime. You have been a good friend to our people. You have our ways. In your blood and in your heart. We have room in our house for one such as you, Capitani. Will you not stay with us? Perhaps always? You do me great honor. But before I can think of such things, I, I have a duty to return our prisoners to the authorities in Tahiti. It's a long way from here to Tahiti. Quiet, somebody's coming. They may need there some water. More water? I've given you so much it'll be running out of your ears. I think this was Death Valley or something. A touch of the island fever it makes me thirsty. to our chains on the desk. That ain't all we found. We were pretty, ain't they? Where's my crew and the chief? We got rid of them. All right, sit down. The only reason you're still alive is because we need you to navigate. You seem to be the captain now. You navigate. Ross! 
We just couldn't throw her overboard. She's too pretty. Well, Captain Knight, what about it? Guarantee her safe passage. And I'll take you to Tahiti. That's better. Only we don't want to go to Tahiti. The gendarmes will be on our next the minute we land. Well, then I'll take you to some smaller island. Raiatea, Bora Bora. Oh, no. The natives on all these here islands are your friends. They know this boat belongs to Captain Knight. Well, you're going to take us to is a lot other than that. Mister, you're going to take us to New Zealand. New Zealand? We haven't enough provisions. There's food and water enough aboard. We'll make it. And suppose we do? What happens then? Then we take the first steamer to the United States. We? Pinky, Ross, and me. <laughs> What's the matter with you? What's eating him? Uh, I've got a dizzy spell. I'll be all right. I got medicine. My cabin. Take the wheel. My medicine kit. you were the brains of this outfit. Your friend here makes good sense. You'll all die of thirst. Captain and prisoner. I was kept chained to the wheel day and night. The loss of food and water had the effect I'd hoped for. The three men had quarreled and divided the loot. Ross celebrated with some brandy he had found in my medical kit. Pinky kept to himself, afraid of losing his share of the pearls. It's pretty rough, Sully. I know how thirsty you must be. Ah, not even a rain cloud. Sully, you see that man over there? He's got a handkerchief just like this. Right here in his pocket. Now go get it. Go get it. My pearls! Good sorry. Now run with it. Run! <laughs> go, sorry. The other way. The other way. Come back here, you crazy chip. Come back here. Never mind. 
Stay on the course. Look what I found. Come on, baby. Have some. Come on, princess. I don't like to drink alone. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Get down there. Oh, he won't hurt her. Tommy, Tommy! Get down there and stop him or this compass goes overboard. Tommy, and we'll never reach land. Well? set a course and lashed the wheel. He took me below to remove the bullet from Ross's body. Mm -hmm. Hold still. I found it. The alcohol. Light down hard, real hard. Tetanus. Prevent lockjaw. Will he live, Capitani? Uh, yeah, he'll live. He has a 50-50 chance. Uh, how can he do this for a guy who'd kill you? An oath I took when I was studying medicine. Four days now and you haven't found land. I told you, Malone, it's a big ocean. When are you going to find that island? Well, we might reach it tomorrow. Yeah. What time tomorrow? Well, about this time, if the wind holds up. Okay, you've got till 3 o'clock. I, I might miss it by an hour or two. 3 o'clock. Starting land any minute now. You had your chance. Look behind you. There's your land.
I can take it from here. You'll never get away with it. Take a good look at those canoes. Your two guys. And the chief. How'd they get here? It's the same island, Malone. Ahu Nui, where you threw them overboard. You brought me back. <laughs> Once again, I was in full charge of my prisoners and my ship. The following week found us anxiously awaiting the arrival of the circuit commissioner. Ross and Malone, now fully recovered, would be turned over to him for trial. Capitani. Any news of the government boat, Totoa? No, Capitani, no boat. I can't understand it. La Marais Wireless said to have the prisoners ready for arraignment this evening. This commissioner has never visited Ahunui before. Perhaps he thought it best to lay outside the reefs until morning. Perhaps. Roxy, let's get the prisoners back to the stockade. Okay. Come on, you two. Back to the pokey. Uh, Chief, can you get us two guards for the night? Of course, right away. Uh, Capitani. Yes, Tutu. Capitani, we are very good friends, aren't we? <laughs> Why, the best. When you when you gave me this knife, you said I could come to you any time if... <laughs> what is it, Sonny? You in some trouble? No, but I have something I must show you. It comes from the sea, Capitani. It is very secret. I have hidden it. Well, I can't write this minute. I'll tell you what. You remember the treehouse we built together out along the point? I'll meet you there in half an hour. It's you, Princess Mareva. Tato, that's not a very pleasant meeting. After all the time I've been away. I'm sorry, Princess. I, I thought it was someone else. I know. You're trying to get the Capitani alone to show him something. Those things you have there. Well, yes, but they wouldn't interest you. They don't look as if they'd interest him either. Just old scraps of rusty iron. Yes, but I thought maybe... <laughs> look, Tato. If you really want to impress a great man like the Capitani... You must bring him something of real value. Perhaps a black pearl from out in the channel. He's coming. Tato, take these old, these old rusty things and run along. Look, I'll tell him when he comes that tomorrow you'll bring him something to prove you're the bravest diver of all the boys in the island. I can do it, too. There are many things of great value where these come from. I know. Quick, now run along. Hey, it's you. You're expecting Tato. Well, yes. He was here with some old rusty things he found in the lagoon. I told him you wouldn't be interested. You did? Why? Because you're a very hard man to interest. Oh? Aren't these tiaris? So you do recognize the tiari? Sure. Deadliest flower in the islands. It means the Vahini's on a manhunt. Manhunt all day? Only the night is left for the Vahini. Oh, no, you don't, Mareva. It's not going to wind up behind my ear. Capitani! Capitani, the commissioner boat has arrived. Capitani does not wish to talk to him tonight. But the commissioner say he must discuss the evidence now because he will be leaving again tomorrow. Well, we'd better go, Mareva. We? Well, after all, you are the star witness. And we do want to be prepared for the trial in the morning. Next morning, Totoa set out early to prove his skill as a diver. I had no way of knowing the importance of what he had found. I was too interested in the trial being conducted by Monsieur Lamoureux. Stealing is a sin, you hear me? It's a great sin. And uh, what's more, it's against the French law. I therefore fine you one canoe full of coconuts. Entendu? Two canoes! 
Next case. Kuala, yes, you see. Larceny again. Seems to me that stealing is a is a major occupation of your lovely village. Uh, no, Excellency. We are an honest people. I did not steal. You did yet steal. It says here expressly, it says... What did you steal? It says, uh... You stole another man's wife. Oh, no, sir. I only borrow. Oh. As I told you, I had the fortune to kill a wild pig while hunting. Clearly, a man needs a woman to cook a pig. Well, haven't you a wife? Yes, Excellency. But she's on the other side of the island, uh, staying with a cousin. <laughs> Now, what about this other woman? Wasn't she found sleeping in your hut? Of course. Where else? After she had cooked the pig, Excellency, and eaten the whole thing, she could not move. <laughs> now, uh, where's this immovable woman? Is she telling the truth? <laughs> it was such a beautiful little pig. <laughs> it is my verdict that no man in his sound mind would steal such a woman. Complaint is dismissed. I shall now hear the criminal case that brought me to this island. Guards, bring forward the prisoners. It is my verdict that you shall be remanded in custody to a central prison in Tahiti. There to stand trial for your lives before the High Court of the Governor General. Hearing is adjourned. Clear the court. Uh, by the way, Captain, I need the pearls. You don't mind, Commissioner. I've promised the Chief of Mariba I'd deposit these at the bank at Tahiti. Yes, I do mind. Don't you understand I need them for evidence? But you've got sworn statements they murdered the native divers. If you need any more evidence than that, then I'll come to court and present the pearls. Look, Captain, either you give me the pearls, or I'll tell the Governor General that you place your own personal interests above for justice. I'll have to risk that, Commissioner. Because I gave my word I'd deposit these in Tahiti. And I give you my word, Captain, that, that you'll regret it. Welcome aboard. Jill, I wish to speak to the Capitani. Sure, he's down below. Morning, Princess. Mareva, what brings you here? It's about Tatoa. Tatoa? What's he up to? He went out to die this morning. He's not come back. The whole village is searching. Oh, you don't have to worry about him. He's a great little swimmer. But they do worry. Since he is an orphan, the whole village treats him like a son. Every house is his house. This morning, while everybody was at the trial, he went out to dive alone. His empty canoe drifted ashore. What? Capitani! Come on, but Commissioner. Get these things off our wrists and break out a bottle. Not until we get out of the harbor. Oh, quit playing policeman. You're in this as deep as we are. I'm not. Not quite as deep. I haven't killed any natives. You have. 
I told Tato that if he wanted to make you proud of him, he must dive deep in the channel and bring up something of value. But it's dangerous way out here, even for the strongest divers. I know, Capitan. I was selfish. It isn't like you, Moreva. I wanted to talk to you. Now if he's drowned, it's because I... Oh, stop it, Moreva. We all do things we wish we hadn't. Now, don't you worry. I'll see if I can find him. Capitani! Capitani! Where did you come from? What do you want? I look for the Capitani. But this is the boat of the French commissioner. I know, but didn't the Capitani bring the prisoners here? You stay here. Monsieur Amoray, a native has come aboard. All right, I'll be right up there. Hey, how about these? All right, here. Here's the key to your handcuffs. And here. But I expect you to behave. At, at least you'll be around at sea. It's not likely Tatoa could have gone all the way to the bottom without flippers and air. He'll probably show up somewhere. Tula? Aye, yes, sir. Take the canoe back to the village. Organize a search party and work the reefs. I will, sir. And Roxy, keep a sharp lookout. Right, Skipper. Capitani, you will be careful. What do you want? You just came in, Monsieur le Commissaire. Come on, get off the boat. Get off here. I'm... Get off. Hey. Where did you find these? Uh, it's a secret. I, I can only tell the captain tonight. Oh, a secret? Oh, I see. Well, that's simple. Well, we'll just signal the captain tonight to, to come over here, huh? Come on, sit down. We'll sing. I was determined to find Totoa. But how do you find one small boy in all that big ocean? How do you go about looking for him? The tides could have carried him miles from here. Botari. Now, it is known that when a Botari was lost, she carried a very valuable cargo. A cargo of gold and a great treasure of jewels. Please, Excellency, let me see the Capitani. Not before you tell me where you found it. Oh, uh, Monsieur Duclos. Yes, sir? 
I, I've changed my mind. We are not going to sail for a few hours. Yes, sir. become some sort of a legend. Let's go down and check the records. All right, all right, mon petit. You, you say the wreck is directly below our ship, huh? Almost. I, I think so. That's fine. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Monsieur Duclos, will you please get your diving equipment ready? Aye, right, sir. Hey, Commissioner. Yes. Ross and I are good divers. Let us go down. You know you can depend on us. You two are locked up, and I think it's better to keep you that way. Listen, we heard every word the kid said. We know there's a fortune down there, and we want our share. Oh, sure, sure. Yes. But I tell you one thing. For the last 15 years, all the time I've been here, I've been scouring the islands for a thing just like this. And whatever comes off this wreck will belong to a then-retired French commissioner named Lamouret. Me. No one else. S.S. Botari. 10,000 ton freighter cleared from Rangoon carrying a Burmese king's treasure. Lost without trace in a hurricane May 4th, 1920. Lloyds of London paid one million pounds insurance. Wow! You saw her down there, the ghost ship? Yes, and so did the tour. He left his knife on deck to mark his find. All right, mon petit, now we go and show Monsieur. I'm right. You know, with night snooping around down there, you're gonna need our help. Oh, yes, sure. You know, if he finds that wreck, it'll belong to him and the kid. <laughs> Maybe according to law, but I'll make very sure that the first and the final claim belongs to me. Now, we can... Don't move, I don't want it here. Please, quick. Well, I'll take care of Duco. I'll take care of these two. Monsieur Commissioner. Hey, Malone. Nice making another dive. Arbit the letter. Let's get out of here. Hey, come here, you shut up. To kill him. We may need the commission. Don't forget, he can sail the ship out of this harbor under the full protection of the French flag. Hey, get that kid or get away. Capitani, Capitani. Captain, he's alive. Capitani. Well, Roxy, look, it's Ross. It must be free. Let's get the diving gear. We had searched the reefs. Nothing. So Tatoa's body had to be caught somewhere inside the forward part of the ship. I went in. 
Well, Cap, I'd find us a Batari. It won't do him much good if he never comes up. Grab another gun on the rest of those stairs and let's go. This is what Totoa had found. I saw him alone in Ross. I had to take cover. leading Ross right back to me. Mareva was cornered, but Ross was trapped. Malone saw us grappling.
let Malone see me, then headed the other way. I took cover behind the coral head, but Malone came straight at me from the opposite side. came swimming through a school of fish and saw me. I spotted a cave and we headed that way. where he couldn't miss. He could go for a direct hit or shoot our tanks and blow us to bits. His spear hit the valve of Moreva's emergency tank. I cut off the air and went for Malone before he could reload. Capitani and to our adopted son, Tatoa, we gather today with all the excitement that comes for finding treasure. Capitani? If it hadn't been for Mareva, I wouldn't be here. And since Tatoa found the Botari, I think the honor of opening the chest should go to him. Tatoa? For the princess, a wedding present. Coming back to Timotangi. <laughs> <laughs> 